Good afternoon, people watching at 65, Lisa Boyce. Let me give you a verse of scripture. It is actually in 2 Timothy chapter 4. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. There's a crown laid up for us. Those of us who have our eyes glued to the window. Yeah, there's a crown for us. Let me give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, at least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus, rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time, and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, change you. That's why he's your best friend. This came out today on war news. Um, I guess Iran is doing what <laughs> they're going to war. They're calling it an exercise, but they're actually starting to go in. This came out on war news. Israel puts Russia and Turkey in the axis of evil. So Erdogan is at it again, saying Israel, in addition to Iran, now places both Turkey and Russia in the axis of evil in the Middle War, in the Middle East. After what Erdogan said, it is obvious that not only is there no turning back in the relations between the two countries, but a new escalation is very close. Now they're saying very close. I'm thinking sometime this week, within this week. The same applies to Russia or Israel, Russia relations. After the two harsh announcements by Israeli foreign minister against Moscow. So Israel's foreign minister, Eli Cohen, is calling for reassessment of diplomatic relations with Turkey. And I did a video on some of this the other day. Citing Turkish leaders' harsh criticism of, Israeli, of Israel's uh, military offensive against Hamas. So last week, he recalled his diplomats from the country as he also called on Israeli citizens to leave because of terrorist threats, making it clear that it had nothing to do with bilateral relations. That's what they're saying. Earlier at the weekend, Turkish uh, President Erdogan at a large pro-Palestinian rally, and I did a video about this too, in Istanbul, launched a scathing attack on Israel and its Western allies. Now remember, <laughs> in case you forget, and if you hear something in the background, again, I have live feeds up about what's going on over there right now. In case you forgot, Turkey has been in the news a lot this week. They're part of the Ezekiel 38-39 alliance. And what we're seeing right now is prophecy unfolding before our eyes. That's what we're seeing right now. So what Erdogan said today from Istanbul creates a new deep gap in his relations with the West the U.S., the European Union, and Israel 
to a point where there is no return. This is it, folks. This is the war that's going to get us out of here. Chris has been saying this at Global uh, Rapture Watchers. I've been saying this. I've been talking on the phone with Chris. We both agree. This is it. He called Israel a terrorist organization and strongly accused it of massacring or, uh, uh, civilians. He stated that behind the state of Israel, as well as all the terrorist organizations operating in the region, he forgot about his own terrorist organization operating in the region, but he included everybody else. Along with all the other terrorist uh, uh, organizations operating in the region, is the U.S. As he characteristically said, the West is primarily responsible for the massacre in the Gaza Strip. Israel is an occupier, a war criminal. And sooner or later, he will pay a heavy price for what he is doing. Now, that's funny. They call, he calls Israel a he. Well, if you read the Old Testament, which is what these people are stuck in, and he's not even a Bible believer, he's a Muslim, so, you know. Erdogan concluded speaking to thousands of people in Istanbul. Today, some people see Gaza as a, as a distant place that has nothing to do with us, and they even say so openly. Yet a century ago, Gaza was to this nation what a Dana was to this country. Like Mosul is what Marden is Thessalonica is like Ker, I think it's Kerali, and Aleppo is what Gazian tip is. Gaza was an, an integral part of our homeland that we thought was inseparable. But unfortunately, they separated us from all these lands that belong to us as much as our blood, our life, and our love. Oh, how touching. There is no doubt that Turkey is a great state with its history, culture, geography, and culture. No incident, no crisis, no alliance formed in the South, North, East, or West, or even beyond our country is above Turkey. Hmm. As I said before, Hamas is not a terrorist organization. Netanyahu is a terrorist. And I feel sorry for those who don't know what Hamas really is. We are not only calling for the massacre in Gaza, but we are defending our independence, our future. What was Palestine and Gaza in 1947 and what it is today? How did Israel come about? How did it get in? It's an invader. It's an, or it's an organization. The West owes you, but Turkey does not owe you. The West is responsible for the carnage in Gaza. Everyone knows it. Because Israel cannot take a step without them. Oh, but God. This guy forgets that. He forgets that. This is all the speech that he said. 
calling on the U.S., the West, and Israel. Calling them out. Now, this is right here is going into about Russia. So Israeli uh, diplomacy has summoned the Russian ambassador to express to him the anger of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government over Moscow's decision to host represent representatives of the Palestinian Islamic movement, Hamas, following its military arms unprecedented attack. Israel Foreign Ministry emphasized that it made it clear to Russia's ambassador that it considers Moscow's lack of unequivocal and clear condemnation of the terrorist organization Hamas to be a serious matter. Russian Foreign Minister diplomats met for talks with Hamas representatives in Moscow on Thursday. The release of foreign hostages and a situation in the Gaza Strip were discussed. The removal of Russians and other foreign, uh, foreigners from the Gaza Strip was also discussed. Earlier, Israel issued a harsh statement against Russia after the visit of a Hamas delegation. So now, like I said yesterday, once Turkey gets involved, Iran is going to get involved. Once Iran gets involved, Russia is going to get involved. Then you got Ezekiel and Psalm 83, all wrapped up into one, like I've been saying before. So Erdogan has got to get his kicks in, of course. And where Erdogan goes, the proxies follow. Proxies meaning Iran and Russia. We're going to see something happen and I'm beginning, I, I agree wholeheartedly with Chris on this. Probably on the first. Probably. I could be wrong, but it's going to happen eventually. I believe the only one holding this whole thing back again is the Lord. It's the Lord. So I'm going to link this in the description box. I will be back later. Thank you.